Hi, assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 7, Ionic Equilibrium. And we're going to focus on the subtopic of 7.3, which is the solubility equilibria, part 2 of the video. So in this video, we're going to learn about the definition as well as the explanation for the common ion effect. Next, we're going to learn about to perform the calculation related to common ion effect. So the learning outcome of D and E will be covered in part 2, which is in this video. Meanwhile, for the learning outcome of A, B, and C, we have looked about that in the previous video, which is in part 1. So without any further ado, let us start with part 2 of the video first. So, common ion effect. So what basically is a common ion? So common ion is basically ion that is common or similar to two or more components in a mixture of the solutions of an ion. So by having the common ion, it will affect the solubility in which it only reduce the solubility of the salt or increase the precipitation when the common ion is present. So let's say if we have our AgCl here. So AgCl, when it dissolves in water, okay, let's say AgCl is inside the water here, we know that it will form an equilibrium with Ag plus as well as the Cl minus. So it's going to maybe dissolve slightly, okay? However, when there is an, an ACL solution here, and then you're going to put your AgCl salt, it will dissolve even more difficult, okay? It will become more difficult to dissolve. Why is that? This is because of the common ion effect. So inside the NaCl solution, they're going to be extra Cl minus ion. Okay? So when there is an extra Cl minus ion, the concentration of the Cl minus ion will get higher. And as a result, what they're going to do is they're going to reduce the concentration of the Cl minus and the equilibrium will shift to the left according to the leach hatter principle. And as a result, the solubility of the AgCl2 will be decreases. Okay, the susah nak dissolve menjadi ion. Pasal dia, direction of equilibrium is going to the left. And as a result, they're going to be increasing the precipitation of the AgCl2. Okay, and this situation is not happening inside water. It's only happening inside the NaCl solution in which it has the common ion which is Cl minus here, and then the Cl minus coming from the AgCl. Jadi, bila ada terlampau banyak, dia akan shift the equilibrium position to the left and reduce the solubility. And for the conclusion, we can say that the addition of the common ion will reduce the solubility of a slightly soluble salt in, in its saturated solution. So now, let us look into the example and in order to prove it mathematically. So, for example, number one, the solubility product for the AgCl is 1.7 times 10 to the power of negative 10 mole to the m minus 2, 6. So this one is equivalent to m square. We need to calculate the molar solubility of the AgCl inside the water. And we also need to calculate the molar solubility, which is S, inside the 0 0.1 mole per dm cube for the KCl. And then we need to compare the solubility in one as well as in number two. Okay. So in the pure water, when the when the AgCl is being added, so it's gonna form a saturated solution in which the AgCl solid gonna be in equilibrium with Ag plus aqueous ion as well as the Cl minus aqueous ion. So when it dissociated, we can let S to be the molar solubility of HCl inside the water. So it's going to be dissociated into S as well as an S. So we can find our KSP in which our KSP expression is equal to Ag plus multiplied by the concentration of the another product which is the Cl minus. So we're going to get S and S here and then our KSP is gotten from the equation, which is 1.7 times 10 to the power of negative 10. And then we can calculate the value of S. 
by square rooting the value here. So finally, finally we're going to get the molar solubility of HCl in inside the water to be 1.3 times 10 to the power of negative 5 molar. Okay, so kebolehan untuk HCl dissolved dalam air adalah sebanyak 1.3 times 10 to the power of negative 5 molar. Now, we're going to repeat the situation but in the different solvent. Okay, in a different solution which is the KCl solution. So the KCl solution is having a concentration of 0.1 molar. So as what you can see here, the KCl solution will have K plus as well as the Cl minus equals ion. Jadi ada Cl minus pada permulaan sebelum AgCl diletakkan. Alright? So when the AgCl is inside the, inside the KCl solution, you know that the Cl minus ion will be very very high and they're going to be a common ion in fact the other ion yang sama okay so as usual we need to write the equilibrium between the solid state as well as the aqueous state and then we need to let the solubility of AgCl in 0.1 molar of KCl solution to be 1 okay and when the AgCl dissociated it's going to give a value of y here and then a value of y here. However, the Cl minus aqueous ion will have 0.1. Okay, so we need to add up with 0.1. Okay, so it's going to be y plus y plus 0.1 because initially they're going to be having 0.1 concentration. So from here, we can calculate the KSP in which we can write our KSP expression first, which is Ag plus multiplied by the Cl minus. So y multiplied by y plus 0, 1. And then we can make an assumption because this value here is very, very small. So when y is very, very little than 0, 0.1, we're going to assume that y plus 0, 0.1 is basically equal to the 0, 0.1. Okay, so we're, gonna, we're just going to change it to 0, 0.1. And then y times 0, 0.1 is going to be 0, 0.1 y. And then we can find the value of y by dividing with 0 0.1. So y, we're going to get it to be 1.7 times 10 to the power of negative 9 molar. So we can say that the solubility of AgCl in 0 0.1 mole of the KCl is 1.7 times 10 to the power of negative 9 molar. And as you were to compare that, we can say that the solubility of AgCl in water is higher than in KCl. Okay, sebab dia boleh dissolve lagi banyak AgCl dalam air berbanding dengan KCl. And this is due to the presence of the common ion which is the Cl- minus, in which it decreases the solubility of the AgCl. Okay, now we're going to do another example in which we're going to look about the barium sulfate. So, the solubility product for the barium sulfate Sulfate is 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 9 mole to the power of 2 dm minus 6, which is also equal to molarity to the power of 2. So we need to calculate the molar solubility of the barium sulfate in the pure water and also in a solution of 0 0.2 mole, 0 0.2 molar of the H2SO4. And then we need to compare the solubility in 1 and 2. So, as mentioned, inside the water, when we pour the, when we put B A as O4 solid, it's going to be in the state of equilibrium with its ion. Okay, so they're going to be equi equilibrium, which is Ba2 plus as well as SO4 2 minus with its salt. And we can let the S to be the molar solubility of barium sulfate in water. So when it dissociated, it's going to produce S and S here. So we can find the KSP, where we're going to write the KSP expression, which is Ba2 plus multiplied by SO4 2 minus. So we're going to get S and S here. And then the KSP is gotten from the equation, which is 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 9. So we're going to get S square, and then we're going to set the value here where S is going to be 3.87 times 10 to the power of negative 9 molar. So we can make a conclusion saying that the solubility of barium sulfate in water 
is 3.87 times 10 to the power of negative 9 molar. Now we're going to repeat the situation where we're going to having a sulfuric acid H2SO4 with a concentration of 0 0.2 molar. So H2SO4 aqueous will dissociate in order to form H plus as well as SO4 2 minus. So in order to balance the equation, we're going to put number 2 here. Okay, and when it has 0 0.2 molar of the sulfuric acid, it's going to produce 0 0.2 molar for the sulfuric acid as well because it is a strong acid. So it's going to dissociate completely in order to produce 0 0.2 molar. Okay, so when the barium sulfate is inside the um, solution of the sulfuric acid, we know that there's going to be a clash of the SO4 to minus. There are going to be a lot of the SO4 minus ions. So we can say that initially, uh, there's going to be SO4 to minus inside the beaker here coming from the acid. And then there are going to be additional SO4 to minus coming from the equilibrium of the salt. So we can let the solubility of the barium sulfate in the 0 0.2 molar sulfuric acid to be Y. And then uh, we can, when the barium sulfate dissociate, it's going to produce barium 2 plus to be Y. Meanwhile, for the sulfate ion, initially they're going to have 0 0.2, but then when the salt dissociate, it's going to increase by Y here. So it's going to be Y and 0 0.2 plus Y. Right? And then we're going to write the KSP expression in which barium 2 plus is going to be multiplied by the SO4 2 minus concentration. So Y multiplied by Y plus 0 2. But we can make an assumption where Y is lesser than 0 0.2. So we can just say that Y plus 0 0.2 is basically equal to 0 0.2. So it's going to, having 0.2y is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 9. So we're going to divide 0.2 into here. So lastly, we're going to get y to be 7.5 times 10 to the power of negative 9 molar. So we can say that the solubility of the barium sulfate in 0.2 molar sulfuric acid is 7.5 times 10 to the power of negative 9. However, the solubility of barium sulfate in water is going to be higher than in the sulfuric acid. Okay, because the value is going to be bigger. In water, it's going to be 3.87 times 10 to the power of negative 5, here to the power of negative 9. So, the less soluble the lump is. Okay, and this is because of the presence of the common ion effect. Yang mana bila concentration of SO4 to minus terlalu banyak it's going to shift the equilibrium to the left and menyebabkan dia susah untuk dissolve menjadi ion. And as a result, the precipitation of barium sulfate is going to be higher and decreases the solubility. Okay, so I think that's all for this video. See you again some other time. Bye!